One of the big things with the many of the virtual asset service providers was how they practiced regulatory arbitrage. And that is that they sought out districts, uh, jurisdictions that promised them little or no regulation. And, and that extended to the United States itself, in which 31 states, not the tough states, not the states that had regimes in place to examine cryptocurrency businesses, but the states that promised, come here, do business with us, it'll be good for the economy, and a few questions asked, that uh, with the collapse, the need for the stricter regulation and, and a sort of a vindication of the U.S. regulators in general who didn't give FTX and carte blanche to operate in the United States nor allow a number of the other VASP to operate in the United States. And the same is true with FTX with regard to uh, the U.K. and Canada that it didn't get license to operate there. I think it's a little bit of a stretch, but you can argue that banks' concerns over anti-money laundering and counter-terror finance issues gave them a great deal of reluctance to deal with cryptocurrency uh, and a lot of the VASPs. And one of the results of that is that the collapse of FTX and the collapse of a number of other uh, cryptocurrency asset businesses has had almost no effect on the banking uh, sector as far as we know right now. Um, I think that the U.S. regulators have perhaps maybe too early, but have taken a little bit of a bow uh, over the fact that banks didn't heavily move into the crypto area and they didn't become big guarantors of cryptocurrency service providers.